and we're off to day four. <laughs> yeah, Tam Tam, does it smell like sheep? And as you can hear from uh, his uh, breath, <laughs> we, we just came back from playing frisbee outside. <laughs> yeah, poking everything now. I did spend a bit on my lunch time without filming, so my bobbin is a little bit more full than it was yesterday. But let's keep on spinning! Keep on spinning? Keep on spinning? Yeah, keep on spinning. Did I just say that? I think so. As usual, end of the day, words are hard. <laughs> Relaxing spin. Something I love about this face, I probably said it a thousand times already, but it's the variation of uh, color from like gray to brown to like almost black in some po in some places. It, it, it's it's very very pretty. It's for sure gonna barber pole when I fly, but uh, I think the end result will be very very beautiful, very nice. Expected to do some uh, subtle striping whenever I knit it. It should be interesting. Fun fact: I just came back from outside, and uh, I was looking at my wool plant, and uh, it was flowering earlier this month. Well, earlier last month, because we're in July now. Uh, so it was flowering in June, and I was like, oh, fine, like it's a. Uh, that's a plant of flowers. And uh, now it has seeds. And the plant is slowly withering away. So I looked up online, and woad is a bi biennial plant. <laughs> which means that I bought a second year plant, which isn't great, great for uh, pigment, I think. I I I'll still try to harvest the, the leaves and see if I can get any pigment from it, but uh, right now I have seeds. <laughs> More seeds than leaves. <laughs> so, I'll plant some for next year, but uh, I, I, I wanted to make some uh, some blue dye this year. We'll see if, uh, if I manage or not, but uh, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit bum, bummed about that. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, I, I don't know if, uh, well, I'll Google it, but uh, if anyone knows uh, if I can use the second year leaves to make dye, please leave a, a comment below. I, I don't think that uh, it's commonly used, because the leaves are very small compared to what I see online for uh, Woad. So I, I feel like the second year the leaves are smaller and then it shoots out the flower, mostly. I don't know. Not an expert. <laughs> Far from being an expert in anything. Well, except my job. But <laughs> I went to school for that. I didn't went. I didn't go to school for dying. Dying with a Y. <laughs> Flying time. <laughs> we got our two beautiful first full bobbins, and it's time for flying for our first scan of tort fleece. So, so let's get on the wheel and let's fly. <laughs> thank you, thank you dogs. Let's fly, I said. <laughs> and this is what we got after my lunch break. So almost the bobbin full, but we still have some. Oops, that was my finger. Boomer moment. <laughs> so this is what we have left on our other bobbin. And 
this is what I've played during uh, during my lunch break. So this is coming along quite well. <laughs> should have a should have a finished game before the end of the day. <laughs> Let's continue to the fleas. Yeah, did you just burp on camera, sir? Did you just burp on camera? <laughs> As you can see, we have our very, very first skein for Tour de Fleece, which is uh, 358 meters, if I remember right. So this is what we managed to do. Uh, well, since, yeah, it's been a week now. We're a Sunday. So a week and a day now. <laughs> Uh, I had a very, um, very stressful week, so I didn't do much. Uh, I have this skein and like maybe half of one bobbin done. Uh, but let's continue spinning. <laughs> Yesterday I went to a little farm with the dogs. Well, it's a park and there's a farm on the park, so we went for a very long walk and today they're very tired. <laughs> yeah, are you tired, sir? And they have cute little sheep over there. I don't know what breed they are, but uh, I'll post a picture. They're really pretty. It, it, was a, it was a fun day. It was very good after the week I had. It was, uh, it was quite good to be with my friends, going for a walk, and then we went in the river, and we played. And, uh, the dogs chase rocks, because uh, they don't care about branches that much, but rocks in the river, the most amazing toys. <laughs> hey, that's my wolf, sir. And that can, uh, we, we can use that as a pivot towards the question of the week. Well, one of the questions of the week. Uh, one of the questions was, um, well, not very, not really a question, but uh, someone asked me to uh, tell some funny stories about my dogs. <laughs> and uh, as you may expect, dogs sometimes do funny stuff. Uh, I think one of my favorite ones from uh, the last few years was um, last summer we went on a very long road trip and we had a van to uh, van around and um, Tommy was uh, sleeping on the passenger seat at the front and one morning I just woke up to a, a, a loud thump in the, in the van and I was like what the hell is that? So I went and checked on Tommy and Tommy had um, <laughs> fell over in his sleep. <laughs> I'll post a picture. Uh, if, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you, uh, you can see it there too. Uh, I'll put the handle and the picture uh, on top of this, uh, of this video. And uh, Tommy fell over on his back and he was just at the bottom of the... <laughs> at the bottom of the... the, the, the well, where, where your foot are in a car. And he was on his back going like, ah, <laughs> I woke up like this. <laughs> Yeah, oh no, I told some funny stories about you and now you're ashamed. Oh no. <laughs> and we're gonna go in a few minutes, I just sat down. I just came back from outside, sir. You can wait. Of course, the minute I sat down to spin, someone wants to go outside. Other than that, I think, uh, I don't have any very, very funny videos, well, not videos, but, uh, story, stories that come to mind just like that. But, uh, they, they have a tendency that, uh, when we go to someone else's place and, uh, when we eat over there, uh, they have a tendency to, um, find the weakest link and, uh, beg for food, like they never eight in their entire life. <laughs> but I think that's a typical dog thing. <laughs> like uh, the other, our other dog, the one that's not on camera as much, uh, she likes to, um, when I'm on uh, meetings, she likes to come in the, um, 
come in the office behind me and uh, just sprawl on the on, on the ground on their back and uh, show her belly to the camera. <laughs> she likes attention, but not not as much when I'm filming apparently. Right now she's sleeping. <laughs> it was a hard day yesterday. And about pets as well, I had another question about uh, in one of my video. Uh, in one of my videos, I showed uh, my uh, my aquarium in my uh, in my office. And in that aquarium, the only thing that's in there is uh, shrimps and snails. <laughs> So uh, yeah, uh, I do have a few a, a few uh, shrimps, uh, mostly red. Uh, there's some blues and some transparent ones. I used to have yellows, but uh, they all died out for some reason. And uh, yeah, they're just ornamental shrimps. Like instead of having fish, I have shrimps, and uh, I give them uh, give them leaves from the trees outside that I dry. Well, I do boil them and then dry them, so they, they they're safe for them. And uh, yeah, they're a cleaning crew, so they're not very fussy on them. Uh, they're not hard to keep, and uh, they're very, uh, very cute to, uh, to watch. Very relaxing. <laughs> New craft unlocked. <laughs> I went to a uh, traditional craft fair today and uh, learn how to make a dip candle. So these are the ones that you make by like dipping the wick over and over. It took me about like 20-25 minutes to make, but uh, way straighter than I thought it would be. <laughs> and uh, it was really fun to do. And just like, it's beeswax and beeswax smells amazing. So like, there's such a sweet smell to it, it's amazing. Yet, um, it's spinning time. There's such a sweet smell to these bikes, I, I love it. And uh, there may or may not be a future video where um, I turn the wax from my bees into uh, some candles. And uh, there, that noise was probably very annoying. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there might, may or may not be a video in the near future about uh, me making some uh, Candles from scratch because uh, I have some hives, so I'll use the the leftover um, leftover wax that I have. Because uh, when you open the the, the combs for um, two, two, two. where's the heart? <laughs> when you try uh, when you get the, the 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 comb open to get the honey out with the the, 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 the extractor, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, leftover wax from that and also sometimes bees uh, will build between the, the frames and you need to remove that otherwise it creates like a massive mess and stuff like that so I have like two big coffee cans full of uh, scrap beeswax that I need to purify so should be able to, uh, to get a few candles out of it and uh, I, I love they, they had like these very very tiny candles for birthday cakes made out of beeswax and I really want to make some <laughs> But yeah, it was quite a fun day. A, a fun... A fun day. Thank you, Chatty Wheel. I thought I oiled you today. Or recently. Guess we'll have to leave with the squeak squeak today. Also, we now have... Uh, well, the first bobbin of the week. After uh, the first cane that we made. So this is the third bobbin of Tour de Fleece and we're starting on the fourth one. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier in the video, I've had quite a stressful week, very anxiety inducing week. And uh, I try to focus on other stuff when I feel like that. And um, something that really helped me this week was uh, the surprise of uh, Yenza on uh, Mine Walden. Uh, she 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 made a shout out to my channel, and uh, that that really really made my day. It was such a lovely gesture, and uh, thank you so much. I told you when we were watching the video live, and I'm telling you again. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you don't know her, I'll link the I'll link her channel below. It's such a lovely chaos chaos uh, channel. It's amazing. It's what. It, 
Ur Channel made me want to spin more because I, I had learned on the drop spindle and uh, but I didn't know what to do I didn't know like it was just for fun I was spinning the dog's hair and uh, yeah Ur Channel really got me into spinning yarn and knitting with my yarn making stuff with my own yarn so it's like a kind of a full circle moment yeah, it really helped me, helped me during my week, and uh, I'm really happy about it. And this yarn is not happy. Going back to questions that we received this week, Yenza asked me <laughs> while I was while I'm talking about her. So she asked, "What do you? What is your experience as a man in a mostly woman-dominated space as the fiber arts world?" And the way I feel, it's like, yes, I feel judged by other people for spinning and knitting and stuff like that. But at the same time, people are like, yeah, you, you know how to do that. That's ex that's impressive. So it's a mix of like judgment because it's a woman's craft and stuff like that, which I don't really care, <laughs> to be fair. And uh, I don't know, people are, people are it, like from my experience, my experience personally is uh, fiber art is a very open community. Like the, it's easy to make friends. I feel like we we have a uh, at the at my uh, local yarn shop. Uh, we have uh, every first Friday of every month we have a knitting circle. And uh, yes, I'm the only man over there, but uh, I'm just I'm just part of the girls, <laughs> just like uh, the 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 super uh, American saying of a uh, part of the part of the boys. And uh, I don't know, I don't feel weird or like different kind of thing. I'm just there knitting a project with everyone else and talking about stuff. And like, I think the, the, the what, what makes me laugh the most is uh, there is some other guys at the knitting circle and it's the husbands of the other women over there. And uh, instead of people laughing at me because I'm knitting, people are laughing at them for not knitting. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I've always feel, felt welcome, and um, I don't know. I, I don't like gender assigned roles. Like, uh, oh, you're a woman. You need to cook. You need to. Uh, you need to do uh, to knit or weave or like be a, a housewife or like, oh, you're a guy. You need to like cars. And uh, I don't like cars. <laughs> and uh, most of my hobbies are not really men specific hobbies let's say <laughs> but i i also sew <laughs> and uh i don't know that's i don't like gender assigned stuff and i try not to make a big deal out of it so people don't really make a big deal out of it either around me which is pretty nice And I think something that helped a lot with that is uh, I went to art school for high school, and um, I think that like made everything else more open or like make me less uh, shy about trying stuff, about trying new stuff, because everyone's in the same kind of mood of like I like creating or like I, I want to try a new medium to express my creativity and stuff like that. So. I don't know. I feel like, yes, I think that the only thing that really affects me is, and by affecting it, uh, it sounds negative, but it's not really negative. Um, it's pattern choices. Just like in sewing, the, the I don't know if it's the same thing anywhere else, but I know in uh, Canada, probably in the US as well. Um, if you're a man sewing, you have two, sh two choices. Either make some, super fancy tailored suit or be a pirate because <laughs> so, that's all that's in the patterns you're gonna find at a 
at the fabric store. And uh, see, so you have to dig deeper and find some patterns online. And like now with YouTube, there's a bunch of people that um, that post their patterns, and then like it creates a community around it. For anything, it's not as bad. I feel like because there's a lot of sweaters for men, and there's a lot of gender neutral um, knitting project, and um, so there's a lot more more choices. But uh, like the big trends of like the shawls and stuff like that, I, I don't feel attached to them as much as other people might be because I I don't wear shawls. <laughs> I'm not an ice and I, so I do not wear the shawl. <laughs> That's a wink to uh, the Wheel of Time if uh, <laughs> people know, uh, know that series. And uh, so yeah, it's more like a... Uh, it's not as easy to hop on trends as a guy because not all patterns work for me kind of thing. Just like, let's say another trend, the, the, the um, adding a trend of uh, mohair to make everything fuzzier. Uh, makes stuff very feminine. <laughs> so... Like, it looks cozy, but I it doesn't look good on me. It looks like I, I stole the sweater from someone else kind of thing, instead of making it my own. But, uh, like, I've learned how to um, how to adjust, adjust stuff. I, I really love... Um, there's a channel on YouTube called uh, Drowning in Yarn, and um, I really like his channel. He, he uses, like, gender-neutral or woman's pattern sometimes, and just, like, reshapes it slightly and it looks very masculine on him and all the picture you see on Ravelry is all women wearing that sweater and then him <laughs> so it's pretty cool so like it's I don't know it creates a community I think and uh, it's a very welcoming community I feel like well at least from what I've seen so far <laughs> it's a very welcoming community And I'd like to use the words of, the words of wisdom that Yenza once said in their video. It's a traditional craft, and we have... How did you say that? I forgot. A traditional craft, but uh, progressive values. Because, <laughs> uh, yes, it is a very traditional craft, but uh, we don't want to be stuck in the past, value-wise. Because it's an evolving world and we don't want to uh, step on other people's rights and we want to be welcoming instead of judging that's how I see it I will not be welcoming that little nut that tried to get into my yarn Ah! Yeah. I insulted you, so now you're broke. <laughs> and that's why you need to be gentle with your turn. Because <laughs> you never know. <laughs> on last week. I said I was on the second book of Stormlight Archive. I just finished it this weekend. And uh, I feel like the, the, the Stormlight Archive, it's super, super slow. And then in the last few chapters, everything happens at once. So like, I feel like the books are setting stuff up to happen at the end of the book, which I'm all there for that. Like. It's cool to have the final showdown and like the final mystery to, to be solved at the end. But I feel like there could be more payoff during, <laughs> during the rest of the book. But uh, I don't hate it. It's cool. I, I like the, the, the mystery and the new uh, discoveries that they made. I'm not gonna spoil anyone. And uh, yeah. It was a cool ending. I'm gonna continue the, 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 rest, of the, the rest of the series. But right now, I started on The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Because a lot of people have been telling me to read it, and I haven't yet. So now I'm part of you guys. I'm slowly reading it. 
and then at some point I'll hit is it the second book and then there's no third book or something like that and I'll be able to shake my fist in the air and be like hey where's the missing book with all of you guys <laughs> I think that was the the main thing that uh, that kept me from it but I finally decided to uh, started. I had an extra credit on Audible, so I decided to try it out. And so far, so good. I think I'm like five hours in, and uh, I really like it. That's very... The, the stakes are not too high, but stuff is happening. <laughs> stuff is happening, and uh, I don't know, that's an inter interesting way of telling the story. I really enjoy it. I think I'm going to continue spinning this. Oh yeah, and uh, we're definitely going to run out of uh, of, uh, <laughs> of fluffs before uh, the end of Tour de Fleece, because uh, I think this bobbin will eat the rest of the little clouds I made, and uh, that's only going to make a second skein. And I think we need at least three more to make a sweater. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll be coming some more this, uh, yeah, the, this coming week, I think. You'll be seeing me combing some more Merry Noble. I also really enjoy seeing everyone's Tour de Fleece spins. There seems to be a uh, a big trend in the, at least in the Yenza's uh, Discord channel. A lot of people seem to be spinning uh, natural colored fibers, so like uh, blue textile and uh, like colors similar to, to, to mine, like darker natural colors like this. And it looks so luxurious that the colors themselves, like dark chocolate and like stone colors and stuff like that, it, it's so cool. I love it so much. And uh, it's very exciting to see everyone's, uh, everyone's spin. Some people spin a lot more than others. <laughs> That's great to see. Uh... That's great to see people spinning. Like it's crazy. Uh, I, I just look at stuff and like during one day they do what I do in a week. <laughs> Maybe me too. One day I'll do it. Also, I tried my hand at long draws recently. I think I mentioned it in the last video, I don't remember. But uh, I tried long draw recently and I think it's uh, something I really like. It's less hard on my fingers because arthritis is not fun. <laughs> and uh, it's easier on the hands. It goes a lot faster and makes the, the yarn like bouncier, more soft. Because there's a lot more uh, air chopped in there. Which is really cool. And also it looks super magical because you're you're just creating yarn by going back and it just like the yarn is appearing between your fingers so I feel like it's magic. And with all of that, I think this is where I'm going to end this uh, this week's video because uh, we are Monday evening now and I still have to <laughs> edit this video and post it for tomorrow. So I think uh, I'll, I'll stop it here. Uh, we have the one bobbin I showed you the other day. We finished the first game of Tour de Fleece and we're maybe a quarter <laughs> into the second bobbin. So yeah. With uh, enough chance, like, I'll spend after editing, and um, with enough luck, maybe tomorrow I'll start playing the second game, or maybe it's gonna be Wednesday, but, uh, but yeah, I'm happy with uh, where I'm at right now in Tour de Fleece, for my first try, anyway. Uh, also, I'm running out very fast of my little crowds that I made. <laughs> I think I have, like, three left plus this one, so um, I'll be combing some more. So next week it's going to be a mix of combing and spinning, 
but uh, hopefully we'll get another skein out. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.